Hi, I'm John. I'm a chemistry graduate student at UCLA. And now in this video, we're going to be going over some chemistry topics. Hope you find this useful and good luck in your course. All right, so in this video lesson, we're going to be going through a series of different problems in which we're going to be trying to deduce the structure of a molecule that corresponds to provided spectral data. And so this is going to draw from HNMR spectroscopy, mass spectrometry, and IR spectroscopy. So what's going to be shown in the following problems is an IR spectrum and then data from HNMR and uh, mass spec. And we'll be trying to figure out what the structure of the molecules are. All right, so looking at this first problem here, this is basically what um, I'm going to be showing as we go through each of the problems. The HNMR data, and so it's going to show the PPM range or the chemical shift um, whether it's a singlet, a doublet, a triplet, etc. Um, the integral number, and so this will be used to see the relative number of identical hydrogens. Um, and then eat, show that for each one of the different peaks that would show up in that spectrum. For the mass spec data, basically given here um, the M over Z value. Um, M meaning if it's for the molecular weight of the compound. Um, and then the relative abundances here in percentages. And then finally, I'll be showing here uh, an IR spectrum. So let's pick this apart for this first problem here. Let's look at the mass spec data first. So for the M over Z of 106, we have that this is the molecular mass uh, using the lowest mass isotopes. And so given this number, we know first off uh, that there are either zero or an even number of nitrogen atoms. We can see then that at 107 here, M over Z, this is our M plus one peak. Now this, we can take this relative abundance, the 8.91%, and divide it by 1.1%, which is the uh, relative abundance of the carbon-13 isotope, to get an approximation of the number of carbon atoms in this molecule. And so given this, we can tell that there are either eight or nine carbons. If we look at the M plus two peak here, we see that this value is less than 4%. So we know that there's no sulfur, no chlorine, and no bromine. Now let's see, going back to this 8.1 value, if there were nine carbons, then the nine carbons alone would give us a mass, a molecular mass of 108. And that's already larger here than the 106 dictated by the molecular mass here. And so that's too many. If we have 8 on the other hand, then 8 times 12 being 96, and so the molecular mass value here, 106 minus 96, gives us 10, or 10 AMU to work with. So 10 left here is not enough for uh, oxygen or nitrogen. Therefore, the only possible uh, molecular formula that we can have is C8H. 10. The next thing that we can do is calculate the degrees of unsaturation of this compound. And so using this formula here, we can see that 2 times the number of carbons, 2 times 8, plus 2, plus the number of nitrogens, well, we don't have any, plus the number of halogens, well, we don't have any, or minus the number of halogens, we don't have any, and then minus the number of hydrogen atoms, all divided by 2. So we calculate this number of four. So what that means is that we can have four rings and or pi bonds or a possible benzene ring. All right, so that's pretty much all the information that we can get out from the mass spectrum so far, and it's already quite a bit. So let's turn our attention now to the IR spectrum. So let's look at it piece by piece. So the first thing that we should do is look for broad um, OH stretch um, representative of an alcohol. Um, obviously that is absent. We don't have any oxygen in our uh, molecular compound, so we wouldn't expect to see it anyway. Um, what about for an amine or amide? That would be an NH stretch. We don't have nitrogen in our compound, so we don't have to worry about it. Uh, we don't have peaks in that region anyway. Um, we can also look for the possibility of a terminal alkyne. So that would be this CH stretch here. 
However, when you console your correlation tables to see the uh, wave number range in which this stretch would appear, um, we can see that it's absent in the spectrum that we're given. Next, we can look for aryl or vinyl CH stretches, and we see that they are present, and so these are peaks that we see here on this side that are greater than 3,000 wave numbers. So these are the aryl or vinyl CH stretches. We can also see uh, alkyl CH stretches. Are so we can tell that by peaks uh, slightly less than 3,000 wave numbers. Again, we don't see any alkyne C triple bond C stretches um, or, or peaks, and so uh, those would be absent in, uh, in our molecules, so no triple bonds. Um, but then we can also see from these overtones, um, as well as for the peaks here, um, around 1,600 wave numbers, 1,500 wave numbers, um, the evidence for a benzene ring. Now, this also makes sense with the possibility, given our degree of unsaturation of four, uh, the possibility of seeing um, a benzene ring. So we'll keep that possibility. Now let's look at the proton NMR data. So the first one we, that we have here, between 7.45 and 7 ppm, a multiplet uh, with an integral of 5. And so this chemical shift is in the range that would be indicative of a phenyl group which would have uh, five different hydrogen atoms and so that matches this integral of five here looking at the second um, chemical sh or the second peak here we see this chemical shift of 2.63 ppm integral of two and so in this case we would have two hydrogen atoms then we have the peak corresponding to the chemical shift at 1.22 ppm, um, and that being a triplet with an integral of three, and so this could be due to three hydrogen atoms. So from the looks of this, it looks like we probably have this benzene ring, this phenyl group here, C6H5. There's only two possible more carbon atoms, and so a very likely scenario is that there's uh, an ethyl group attached to the benzene ring. So this down here on the bottom right would be a possible structure for that. We have the benzene ring with six carbons um, and then this uh, ethyl group attached to that. And so this would have two hydrogens attached to that carbon. This one would have three hydrogens. And so all of the three hydrogens at the end terminus uh, or the end of this uh, ethyl group would be identical. The two hydrogens here are identical. Um, which match the HNMR data that we're provided with. And so this is indeed the final correct answer uh, for this problem.